Hello everyone, I hope you guys are having a wonderful day. I am Arif, your cloud learning journey partner. Well, today's video is very special because in today's video, we can discuss about AWS uh, Lambda. So whenever we're dealing with uh, serverless architecture in AWS uh, environment, definitely we'll use Lambda. It is a very cool service. It helps us to run our application with uh, zero downtime. And uh, it's uh, a wonderful product. Like in every kind of like services, you want to do some sort of automation or anything like that, you have to use AWS Lambda. So uh, without further delay, let's get it started. <laughs> I have logged into my AWS account and from the search menu we have to look for Lambda. So uh, under the description you can uh, see here it's written as like run code without thinking about servers. So here is a cool fun fact that is uh, even though it's saying serverless, it's uh, not using server to run our code, but uh, at the back end, definitely there should be some servers. It doesn't make any sense, like if we don't have servers, how are we gonna run a code, right? But the cool part is that the server is managed from AWS side. So we are not managing the server. We are ma ma just defining how much memory we need and that's all. And uh, our code will uh, run in AWS managed environment server. Isn't it cool? So yes, yeah, so in a new tab, it, the Lambda console has already opened in here. So uh, I already have one Lambda function in here. So uh, let's uh, create a Lambda function from scratch. If we do that, that in the process, we'll learn many things. So let's uh, start. For that, we can uh, click this uh, create function button. So I have clicked here. So we do have a few options in here. The first one is that author from scratch. Start with a simple hello world uh, example. Okay, so that means uh, if you want to build this uh, function from scratch and uh, you have uh, a specific code in mind, then you can go with this route. The next option we do have this is use a blueprint. So it uh, in the description it says uh, like build a Lambda application for sample code and configuration preset for common use cases. So if I select this one here, you can see already a lot of uh, lambda functions are defined that can be really helpful for us so this is at the getting started section under here you can see that uh, get s3 object then uh, hello world function create a microserver that interacts with db table so a lot of good uses on here and then the aws uh, then uh, event stream it automation so a tons of things you can get from here so if one of these uh, tasks matches with your requirement, you can just use this one instead of creating a Lambda function from scratch. And the third option, it wasn't present before a uh, few years ago, but now it has, it is here. So it's a good part that is create a container image. So select a container image, deploy for your function. So you can even deploy a container image in a Lambda function. This is really cool. So for our tutorial, we're gonna use the author from scratch. And first we need to give it a name. Uh, so it could be anything that we'd like to call. Let's uh, call it test function. Runtime, so this is uh, a very interesting section. Under runtime here, you can see what kind of programming language is supported by Lambda. Most of the program languages you can find here, like Python, Node.js, Java, Ruby. So uh, you can choose whatever you are mostly comfortable with. So let's go with the default one and choose the inst inst instruction set architecture of um, you want for your function code. I'm okay with this one, x86-64. Uh, now let's look into the change default execution role section here 
uh, first thing to understand what is the execution rule. So remember one thing about AWS, that is whenever you are deploying any resources on AWS, it must have to have a, a specific permission to actually uh, use another AWS services or access any other AWS services. So here, this is what we're doing. We are assigning some role to this Lambda function for the execution role. So we, we do have a few options in here. We can create a new role with basic Lambda permission. Most of the time, this basic Lambda permission is good enough for our Lambda function. Or we if we have an existing role, we can just define the existing role from here. We can select that from here. And if we want, we can also create a new role from AWS policy template. For this tutorial, I'm gonna just go with the basic uh, lambda uh, lambda permission under the advanced settings section. Let's have a quick look. So here we'll get some advanced level uh, uh, functions like enable VPC. Connect your function to a VPC to access the private resources during the invocation. So what happens uh, uh, by default whenever we create a lambda function, it doesn't reside inside any specific VPC. But if we have a very hard requirement that it need to be inside a VPC or something like that, then we can enable this function. We can enable tags, we can enable function URL, or we can enable code signing for uh, a secure environment or secure coding practice. That's all cool stuff. So yeah, we have gone through all the components in here. Now let's hit create function. Uh, so now we can see this uh, test function is uh, ready. So here is our test function. We are uh, getting one index.mjs uh, file. And here we do have a very simple, very a basic example of a Node.js code. So uh, this is status code 200. It is a positive status and the body is just a JSON string, a stringify hello from lambda. So it's very basic and it's a just uh, returning the response. So today's tutorial, we are not gonna go through like how to code. So it's more of related to lambda centric. So this is the body of the lambda function. And now we'll go through the other components uh, that were created when we hit uh, create function. Okay. So uh, the first thing, let's go through the configuration setting. So let's uh, first look into the general configuration. So by default, the memory that was uh, allocated to this Lambda function is 128 MB. Uh, so it's good enough to run uh, kind of like a small code, but if uh, our package is big or we want to run a very uh, long lines of code, then we can uh, add memories from this edit section. And uh, the timeout is that if it takes more than three seconds to run, then our application, the, our Lambda function will uh, timeout. What if uh, the code that is, we are trying to run is uh, a big one and it takes more than three seconds? Uh, I still remember one time I was uh, trying to run a code in the Lambda function, but uh, every time I was getting the timeout problem, then I look into this uh, configuration section, I changed this three seconds to maybe like 30 seconds and it pretty much solved the issue. So always, uh, whenever we f uh, face a problem, try to find, try to think like uh, what could go wrong, just go through all of the small steps and eventually you'll get there to solve it. So, and also the ephemeral storage, uh, we are getting like 512 MB of ephemeral storage. And from here we can make the changes that we want and uh, then uh, the next section is the triggers. Triggers is an important part in here. So let's see. So here we see three things. One is the add trigger, one is our Lambda function, and uh, the third thing is the add destination. Okay, so let's talk about add trigger. Uh, I am gonna uh, describe a scenario in here. Suppose you have a S3 bucket, okay? We covered S3 bucket, S3 uh, function, uh, S3 little anything with S3. We have covered everything in our previous video. So uh, if you're not familiar with S3, please uh, look into my uh, previous video. From there, you will understand what is Amazon S3. So suppose we have S3 bucket and inside the S3 bucket, we have uploaded few objects or files. So we want a system that is whenever we get a file, we, we a file is uploaded to our S3 bucket, 
we want to get a notification okay so for that we need to run a code and the code will we will use this lambda function so here we'll run our code so whenever under the add trigger section we can add sources so here let's say i'm gonna look for s3 just the way i explained before so under s3 then i can look for my bucket so suppose this is the bucket where my i'm planning to upload my files and so they're like this and then if i add it in here what's gonna happen so suppose i add it in here so uh I need to acknowledge few stuff like acknowledge that using this three bucket both input and output is not so pretty much like some security stuff but uh, I will add it in here so I have added it added this so now we will see it in here so whenever a new file will be uploaded to the S3 bucket the S3 bucket will uh, then trigger this lambda function so this uh, trigger this is how we use the trigger uh, instead of S3, you can use any service uh, to trigger a lambda function. So once it is getting triggered by the lambda function, we want this lambda function to do certain tasks. And those tasks, uh, um, the, then we want to, sub, uh, the, if we have some results, we need to store those results into, into maybe some uh, database, maybe a DynamoDB table, we can add it on the destination. So in this way, we are using Lambda function to actually create a workflow. So for automation, Lambda function is the best thing. So whenever we're thinking about automation in a serverless architecture, we have to always think whether we can use Lambda function because it makes our life easier. Okay, we have covered this uh, section. Now let's look into the permission. Under permission here, you can see uh, the role, uh, execution role, when we created the Lambda function, uh, we agreed to use the basic uh, Lambda execution role. So this is the role that was created. Uh, then the resource, uh, so here, uh, let's uh, look into the role. It will make sense to actually understand how, what kind of permission is added in this uh, role. Okay, so uh, if I click this sign in here, we can see a JSON uh, policy. So this uh, policy is written in a JSON format. Most of the policies and roles related to AWS are written in JSON. So here we can see that, that effect allow logs resources. So it is allowing these Lambda functions to uh, create logs to CloudWatch. And also it is allowing uh, to put the events in a uh, uh, log stream. So this is a basic uh, role and uh, what if we do have a specific requirement for our lambda function maybe our lambda function need to uh, utilize s3 bucket or our lambda function need to uh, need to access the uh, dynamo table then we have to come up with our own custom policy with a role and it will help us to actually uh, get all of those sorts of uh, resources using this lambda function so this is a quick overview of uh, Lambda function. We have covered many things. So we have created a Lambda function from scratch. We have looked into different uh, section of a Lambda function. We have gone through the configuration. And uh, this is, I think, a very good starting point. So at this point, I would uh, highly suggest you guys to actually create an AWS account. From there, you can uh, play with this lambda function you can create some lambda function you can try to uh, merge multiple services uh, with lambda function you can add some triggers in this way you will have the hands-on experience remember for cloud environment it's uh, good to know this uh, uh, knowledge but you have to practice this without practicing it you won't know how to actually um, integrate multiple AWS services to come up with a very efficient solution so it's always better to actually have a hands-on experience uh, that's all for today's video uh, thank you so much guys for watching my videos it means a lot um, well I want to create a community where everybody will help each other to become a better IT person if you guys have any questions or any concerns related to this AWS lambda a function feel free to let me know under this comment section and i guarantee that i'm gonna reply you back if you have any specific AWS service of mind that you want me to cover just let me know under this comment section and i will definitely cover that beside aws uh, if you have any question related to azure anything related to google cloud anything related to um, cyber security cloud security just uh, let me know under the comment section uh, that's all for today and uh, thank you guys and uh, have a great and wonderful day